All right, well, DNN Technologies is launching robots in the fight against COVID-19 in South Africa. Most developed countries in the world are also using robots as a front line for screening and testing. Uh, to hear more on this, uh, we welcome digital transformation consultant David Rampegwa uh, from DNN Technologies. A very good afternoon to you, sir. Thank you very much for joining us on SABC News. Good afternoon to you and thanks for having me today. Yeah, as I said in the intro, uh, of course, developed countries are already using uh, robots as uh, front line for screening and testing. And I see that Rwanda has also recently deployed uh, five high tech robots for use in hospitals. Uh, do you know how well it is working in those uh, developed countries and, of course, our very own uh, uh, neighbors in, uh, in, in, East, uh, in East Africa? Definitely, yes. There's quite a number of um, great stories and use cases that we've basically been monitoring and seeing in those particular environments. And I think the most important thing is basically the ability of the technology that you're able to configure it in such a way that enables certain functionalities depending on what your requirements are. So there has been a great uh, positive adoption in those particular respective countries, especially because if you look at what is happening in the, in the respective industries or areas of health specifically, uh, we hear statistics that about 30% of health workers in terms of their hours or their allocations, in terms of their day-to-day uh, -day activities is spent on attending the patients with regard to maybe doing temp screening or delivering medicine and other activities. So if 30% of those time allocation could basically be spent or allocated to this technology, it basically means that you now have health workers who can have additional time to basically either rest or basically be in a position to attend to other things. So there's been quite a remarkable positive adoption of this technology. Yeah, I mean, with digital uh, transformation, of course, comes a very heavy cost. What are we looking at uh, in terms of, uh, you know, with this introduction, let's say it was to be introduced in some hospitals, what are the costs looking like uh, for uh, the government who would then obviously have to dig deep uh, to, to, to pay for such? You see, the beauty about it is that, um, I mean, there's, there's about two models to go about it, where there's CAPEX, where a, a hospital or a public uh, 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 health facility could basically procure this technology and own it and manage it by themselves, or it could basically be a pay-per-use pay, pay, pay uh, type model where they do not necessarily have to raise capital to uh, employ this technology. Mm. So there are basically different configurations you can basically look at, but it's quite uh, 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 reasonable enough to, to be uh, in terms of affordability that you can have a number of uh, health sector environment being able to afford the technology. Yeah, uh, this obviously is great in terms of uh, addressing possible spread of coronavirus. I mean, if we have robots uh, doing certain jobs, I mean, I was listening to this clip that uh, we're, we're playing now in in the background uh, where the robot is asking certain questions that you generally, uh, you know, you generally hear if you're going to, let's say, a hospital, for example. Um, but what about, you know, the fact that there would be people who are saying, yes, see, this is concerning in terms of the fact that this might mean, uh, you know, these robots could potentially take away our jobs. What would you say to those people uh, in, worried in those sectors where the introduction of uh, robots is, is in fact possible? You see, the beauty about technology is that, I mean, if you look at the example of the robots that refer is that they are configurable. So you can basically look at your resource allocation and management in your health facility and say, today I would like the, the robots to basically stuff in the pharmaceutical area. Mm. Uh, the other day it could basically be in a different uh, function. The other day it could basically be in the catering environment where it's in a kitchen where you're just basically getting the robots to deliver food to the patients. And if there's no activity that is basically required for the robots at that particular time, you are on full steam, you are 100% functional, you've got all your resources on on deck, there is the basic to basically utilize them. So I do not necessarily want to maybe uh, focus much on, on the ability, on the fact that the, the technology could basically replace um, uh, human resources in that in that particular scenario. Yeah. But the issue is that it's configurable. You are able to basically be in a position to choose what you want them to do today. And the next day, they might not necessarily be in, in a position to function. So yeah. it's as and, as and when required. It's not necessarily a full replacement. Because another example, if you look at the health sector, I mean, if I were to be in a hospital, I would want to speak to a nurse and not, not a box or a technology. Yeah. That human touch will always be required in such environment. So it's uh, yeah, and, and I mean, a complete replacement of, yeah. of our health.
David, I mean, you know, our listeners aren't hearing uh, that uh, they're just seeing the visuals of uh, that particular robot. Um, I think it's a clip that uh, you might have sent us, but it, uh, you know, you can hear what it's saying. Can you take us through uh, some of what that particular robot is capable of doing? I mean, it's really interesting. I mean, it can also check temperature. It can uh, monitor patient status, keep medical records and so forth. What more can that particular gadget, that particular robot actually do? So let, let me give a, a very practical, exciting application that we can basically consider. So uh, in, in, a, in rural environments, so you've got clinics that are basically feeding into uh, uh, the hospitals in the cities or hospitals in towns. Mm. So what happens is that you have patients that are basically left to queue, long queues at clinics to basically be attended by the doctors. And in some instances, you find that the doctors do not necessarily have all the areas of specialities. Now, if you place such a robot in a rural clinic and you have a specialist who is basically based in a provincial town or whatever city that could basically be linking to the remote clinics, you now have a telemedicine functionality where nurses or health workers at a clinic can basically configure the solution in such a way that you now have patients that are attended to by specialists who could even be in an, another province. Mm. But if you look at a COVID facility, like the, 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 the I mean, if, if I recall, probably there's about two of them that are getting launched in, in Gauteng, as an example, uh, at Nasrek, as well as somewhere in Caltenville. I mean, there could be cases whereby on a day, day-to-day -day activity, you find that doctors have basically do visits to the patients maybe four, if not five times. Now, there's certain functions that out of the four, the five times could basically be handled by the robots themselves so that you basically give a bit of time for the doctors to also rest. I mean, when we basically reach that peak, which we basically hear the news that we are going towards that particular season, uh, you could basically have cases where instead of health workers working 30-hour schedules, they could basically be in a position to have maybe four, of, if not five hours or even more of rest by virtue of the fact that you employ this technology to basically assist and complement in that particular environment. But in terms of uh, straightforward patient um, exercise, you could have cases whereby from a patient onboarding, when a patient is walking into a reception area at a hospital, there could be a questionnaire that could basically be uh, automatically harnessed by the robots themselves, go into a central database that by the time the patient is basically having consultation with the doctor, 50 if not 80 percent of the data has already been captured. It's not necessarily a manual process. It becomes a seamless, quite exciting exercise that doctors can basically um, um, enjoy in a, in, a, in a health facility as, as, as it may be. Yeah, it's so interesting. Thank you very much uh, for giving us uh, your insights on uh, this uh, digital uh, transformation that uh, no doubt we'll uh, have to take in uh, at some point. Thank you very much for your time, Sir David Rampekwa, who is a digital transformation uh, consultant from uh, DNN Technologies. Many thanks.